Hello everybody. In this video we want to wrap up, at least for the time being, our discussion of uh, continuity, uh, at least direct continuity. Uh, next time we'll be doing uniform continuity. Uh, in particular I want to look at the converse to the intermediate value theorem. So in the end of our previous video where we wrote down the intermediate value theorem, uh, we saw that if you had a function which was continuous on some interval a, b, and you knew that, say, f of b was less than f of, f of a was less than f of b, uh, of course it would work the other way if f of b was uh, less than f of a, uh, then you could find for anything, any c between f of a and f of b, you could find some input such that f realizes that output c, okay, at, at, at that input z, whatever. Uh, and so a reasonable follow-up question is, well, what if you know that f has this property, that for every c between f of a and f of b, you can find an input which maps to c? Does that mean that your function is continuous? And it's going to turn out the answer is no. And so that will mean we get to write down a, a definition. So, uh, so if we have some function f, from say a, b to r, uh, we're going to say that f satisfies the intermediate value property. So not the intermediate value theorem, but the intermediate value property. It's a long expression. All right, maybe I'll abbreviate it IVP, which by the way is not intermediate value problem. Uh, so it's going to say, We'll say it satisfies the intermediate value property if uh, whenever x is less than y, and both are inside the interval a, b, and uh, c, well, we're just going to say that c lies in between f of x and f of y. That'll capture the uh, both instances, either where f of x is less than f of y or f of x is greater than f of y. So if, and C lies in between F of A and F of B, or rather F of X and F of Y, excuse me, uh, then there exists some Z such that, well, okay, Z should be between X and Y, and F of Z is equal to C. Okay, so the conclusion essentially of the intermediate value theorem, only now instead of just checking at the endpoints, just for any two points in, in the interval, right, in the domain F. Okay, so let's see an example now of a function which is not continuous on the entire domain, but which does satisfy the intermediate value property. So we go back to one of our monster functions. We're going to define f of x. Well, it's going to be piecewise. So when x is equal to 0, we, we just let f of 0 be 0. Okay, easy enough. When x is not equal to 0, then we let f of x be sine of 1 over x. Okay, so we already saw that f is not continuous at 0. Okay, this is the one where we plotted it in Desmos, and near zero, it just goes wild. Okay, it goes up and down, up and down, very, very fast. And, and there is no reasonable value to give it when x is equal to zero. So we actually get a discontinuity at zero. However, on the interval zero to one, remember, it went up and down, up and down, up and down infinitely many times. The closer you got to zero, the more it did this. So you're hitting all of the possible outputs, right? F here is going to lie between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so negative 1 is less than or equal to F of X is less than or equal to 1 for all X. Okay, and we know that it takes on all the values between negative 1 and 1 in any interval around 0. So F satisfies the intermediate value property even though it is not continuous. Okay, so this tells us that the converse to the intermediate value theorem does not hold. Now, uh, in another uh, few sections, we're going to come back to this, uh, where we're going to 
uh, state something called Darboe's theorem, which is going to tell us that, well, if we know that our function is differentiable on the closed interval, well, that already tells you continuous. You know, it satisfies the intermediate value property. But actually, if instead of looking at the original function, which I know is differentiable, but I look at its derivative, then the derivative has to satisfy the intermediate value property. And this is going to give us a huge, huge range of or a class of functions which don't therefore have antiderivatives, right? Namely, any function which doesn't satisfy this intermediate value property, right? As soon as this IVP fails, then your function is not going to have an antiderivative. All right, we'll see you next time when we start on uniform continuity.